Hi friends! Today we're hopping into another makeup drawer. The response from my last get ready with me in diving into older makeup was wonderful and I want to do it again because it was a lot of fun. Also, I haven't purchased anything new so don't have makeup to review and that's fine. I just thought, well, we'll just hop into the makeup I already have. Maybe you can too. And if it's your first time here, Hi, I'm Alicia, an online coach who specializes in flexibility, body weight training, helping people establish sustainable nutrition and movement habits. But I also love the makeup and finding out what I have because I have so much, I forgot what I own. I won't apply everything, of course, but I can briefly cover a lot of the products in here, why I bought it, what I think about it, and then choose the select few that will be applied on my face today. And with all those details out the way, I think it's time for you to get in a little closer <gasps> that's enough i have the hollow taco third anniversary gala shadow <laughs> hello nail polish on this is blacklisted which is just a beautiful like screams new year's eve party and i think this is i forgot the name of it i'll put everything down in the description box below if you want to take a look but i'm very happy with this manicure i thought we can start with the face i had mentioned in my last video that i've been applying the peach and lily the peach and lily is over there <laughs> <laughs> I'm so lazy. It's over there somewhere, but because I will be removing this shortly after applying it, you know how that goes. I figured I will skip it and actually went into my foundation, uh, what is this called? Trey picked up the Tom Ford Foundation Stick 6.5 in Sable. I haven't used this in quite some time. I think it might be, yeah. A little too light for what's going on right now so i'll apply this center of the face and this is an emollient foundation satin finish i would say satin natural finish it's not matte so if you're oily it might uh kind of wear on you quickly so i think more ideal for drier skin types i just realized that i don't have Look, I had, I had to get up anyway, that's what I get. Going in with Pat Skin Fetish Foundation, medium 18 on the outer perimeters because that's going to balance out the color that 6.5 Sable cannot really deliver because, you know, this color all over my face, ooh, that will be a problem. Good old BK Beauty Contour Foundation Red 101. It'll be helpful if you had a mirror. Thank you so much. So you can see it blends beautifully well. Uh, unfortunately, the shade itself not ideal now. And I could also understand the argument that center of the face tends to be a little more oily than the outer. So this texture may be, or rather finish, not ideal for the inside of my face, but I love how it looks. It just leaves behind a beautiful luminous finish. And with the pat foundation, I would say the pat foundation might have a little more of a soft matte finish compared to the Tom Ford foundation stick. So I think this is a great pairing in addressing kind of both needs uh, on my face. Had to get up a second time for the concealer. <laughs> TN3 LYS Triple Fix Concealer. Over the weekend, I actually just brought along the LYS and the Rose Ink Skin Tint, which actually is now a little light for me. Hmm. I won't buy another shade. I think, you know, once we get past the season, it will all balance out and of course I will use concealer or other uh, foundation products if I need it to kind of round it out. That doesn't make much sense because the whole point of using the skin tint is to have a lighter coverage moment. So I would rely on bronzer to invite uh, more sculpt, more warmth to the complexion so I don't have to buy a whole new skin tint just for how my complexion looks now. The Sable actually lightened it up a lot, so I applied too much of the Sable 6.5. Not quite my color, but it's fine because we're gonna we're gonna figure this out. So funny, guess what I had in this drawer? This is the coveted Chanel. Soleil Tan de Chanel. Bronze Universal, after years and years and years, they finally came out with like 
a deeper shade but still not deep enough for all to use on the on the deeper end of the spectrum this is like the <laughs> <laughs> the every the everyone can use shade which not very deep as you see so this is more suitable for light to medium skin tones i don't think yeah i mean right now for me it doesn't even show some people i think did use this as like a makeup base like a foundation to set up the bronze I'm not entirely sure of the different techniques under the Chanel makeup realm that you could use this as. For instance, under the foundation or as bronzer, I usually use it as bronzer, but it's not going to offer anything right now. The Natasha Denona Tan Bronze and Glow Palette. This is one of my most favorite bronze shades ever in my entire collection. It just has a ruddiness to it that I adore. And this was, was this like the first... Natasha face palette in this size because she did have the bigger ones the six pan ones but I think that might have been one of her first like four pan face palette we also have bronze cheek and bloom no shame on you it was bloom that was the first face palette had a blush cream shade and a glow shade the blush shade was universal in that it was a deep berry wine so you can kind of lessen the intensity if you were lighter or use more if you were deeper so great color then you have the cream highlighter which could have been used as a cheek highlight or even higher on the cheekbones these powders are great you kind of have to use a light hand with them or pick the right brush so it won't look overly textured on the skin. People didn't like the bronze chic palette because of these putty textures. I really liked them because I thought they were unique in terms of the how it looked on the skin. So this was the cheek putty shade, which I understand. Like swatch wise, you're like, what is that? What is that doing? And then the glow putty shade was the like iridescent kind of pink base flip where again you could put on your cheekbones or what have you i saw natasha was coming out with her dream collection yes my radar is on that i'm not entirely sure it implies that she took her favorite shades that are already existing in her collection and then put it in one palette i'm speculating i don't know if that's the case or they are new shades or repeats and new shades. I, I don't know what's going on with that. So that'll be interesting to actually find out. Oh my goodness. The Patrick Ta Major Headlines Double Take Cream and Powder Blush in Do We Know Her? This was, oh my God, when this first hit the shelves, everyone lost their freaking minds. Incredible product. You have the cream up top and the powder, but Patrick's approach was to apply the cream, or no, it was apply the powder first and then the cream, wrong finger, and then the cream, which I thought was interesting, but that's how he did it. This was like the peachy coral shade, which I thought was lovely. I only bought this and one other, and when the big palette released with six pans, that sold out so fast. I think it was around the time where there was a Sephora sale going on, and I kept going back and forth, back and forth. I'm like, I cannot buy another cheek palette it's just like you saw i already showed you three natasha denona face palettes three out of the how many she has in all how many i have in all and we're not even done going through this drawer and that's why i'm so happy that i didn't buy that palette because although there was some fomo at the time i just said hey hey not that i'm ignoring the excellent formula of the cream powder palette that we just saw from Patrick Ta I'm sure it's astounding I just don't want all that makeup you know what I'm saying and then I have the Natasha Denona blush duo which I think I picked up at a sale that when her New York store was open this was like half off or did I no maybe I bought this from Beautylish I can't remember. 02 to 2 and 04 Matte Peachy Nude. This color, I think, was like a, it had a luminosity to it. So you could apply this like from cheek to cheekbone and then the more blush shade on the majority of the cheeks. Linda Helberg, oh, every time I watch Linda do makeup on Instagram, it is so 
fascinating and the carefree nature she exhibits is i is incomprehensible and the looks that always end up just from her tossing brush and color just so effortless and whimsical there's like a, a a whimsical nature about how linda approaches makeup and she imbues that into her brand with all her products being multi-use where whether it's eyes lips brows or face you can use these powders anywhere on a face and body so this was the first infinity palette where you have all the blush highlight and also sculpting shades to kind of do what you need to do on both cheeks and eyes and infinity deep which included deeper shades from what we saw in the first infinity palette which was great so these have the more warmer golden bronzy tones and then we have the spectral palette yes i kept the box because that's just how I am. Lovely pastel palette in the same design as her Infinity ones. You have shimmers, you have mattes, and I think these are great shades. Just not only you can wear together solo or you could supplement with others. Maybe we'll do pastel today. Every time I see those shades, I get inspired immediately. Oh, we got some melt palettes. We got the blueprint palette. Interesting palette. I think this was one of the more well-received palettes from the entire eyeshadow portfolio in the Melt brand. This is how the actual palette looks like. I think very clever in the design. Originally released as a stacked and reintroduced as a palette in a traditional palette format. And you can see you have the gold brown tones on one side and the blues on the other. These are excellent metallic shades. And uh, Dana, I think this is one of her favorite palettes. Hey, Dana. I do love these colors. And you can approach this from a minimalistic standpoint where, yes, you can just stick to these tones if you wanted to keep it as simple as possible, introduce parts of the blue if you like to kind of spruce up the look, or just keep it all blue. And that will be punchy because this blue mat, I mean, I don't even have to move my finger close to the lens for you to understand the depth, okay? You still want the swatch. Here, I'll give it to you. Look at that blue and it does stain so if you ever have the blueprint palette sound off below if you had to you know really use that heavy duty oh excuse me eye makeup remover i finally found my mini palette so when i filmed with pat mcgrath's midnight voyage the mini palette that recently released i think what like two months back or something like that. This was the second mini palette after the original one that I showed in that video as well. The Eye Ecstasy Subversive Palette, one out of two editions, including shades that are found in Mothership for Decadence. Also, I believe, released as singles. When those singles came out, do you remember, fam? Everyone was just floored by the price, super expensive for single plastic packaging. Some shades were new and, and you know, I remember buying several of those singles. Lapis Luxury is in decadence. Gold Standard is in decadence. Crimson Fire, I th was that in like a holiday palette from like 2018? Maybe. Blue Blood Decadence Synthetica was one of the newer shades or, or a shade that released as a single. But isn't that lovely? I know this was not as luxurious as the Mothership packaging, but boy, oh boy, do these come in handy when you need to travel, but you need the shadow to deliver, okay? You need that Showtime lid without the hassle in worrying about an entire mothership palette breaking in transit. Don't even think about it. I know, oh my gosh, too terrible. Natasha Dunona, again, one of her five shadow palettes. These were released separately, and then the big Mama 28 Pam palettes are the ones that house all these five Pam palettes. So if you have all the five Pam palettes, you technically have all the shadows that exist in the 28 pans. This one is palette 04. Ooh, with... I might have to apply this one today. Oh, when you when you hit me with the cool plum, man, it's over. Aura Cool Bronze Cool Plum Oxide 
and Moonstone. Look at this color. I just love shades like these. I actually have to use my other finger because it's covered in blueprint. This is again Oxide. This is again Cool Plum. Look at those shades. You can't go wrong with these shades. Especially this formula. It's so soft and skin-like and finish and just a breeze to apply. So for all my One Piece fans, I don't know if tangents, did I warn you about the tangents in these uh, makeup archive get ready with me videos. Yeah, there are gonna be a few if you follow Jin Wei Jin Wei is an anime Well, Jin is a tattoo artist, but she is coming out with a Luffy sweat. Look at this. She's coming out with the Luffy sweatshirt Oh, I'm gonna wear on my Zoro shorts. Oh my gosh. This is one out of several pieces I think Jin's releasing coming back in the fall I wonder what she has up her sleeves for the fall. I made the hugest purchase from Jinwei. <laughs> I bought like three pairs of shorts because she did the Gojo shorts, the Itachi shorts, and the Nitsu shorts. How could I not? And the Levi towel. Because she's a tattoo artist, she just kind of recreates all the characters in whatever way Jin wants. It's incredible. And yeah, I got the Levi towel. I'm not ashamed to say. I'm gonna use it right away. Or maybe not. I'm just gonna hang it on the wall. Who knows? Look at these palettes. I think these were the original three Kaleidos palettes. They were so kind to send me PR for a portion of time. I thank them for that. Uh, Futurism, one through Three. Oh, this kind of reminds me of what we just saw the Natasha Denona, right? So this is like uh, kind of giving you a little more of the red and then you have a wider spectrum of color here with the silver there. But those are pretty. I forgot about these palettes, fam. I'm doing this also for myself to kind of remind the, the, the brain that do you really need to buy more, Alicia? We have an edited Melt Gemini. This is basically it. With, again, you got the mustardy, rusty shade, you got the two olives, you got the black, you have two metallics. So yes, not as wide, but I think, you know, there there's enough variety here for you to not only do more goldy mustard brown, but to go all the way olive if you wanted. And lastly, a Futurism 3 Astro Pink. This was pretty. I thought this was really pretty because of the mauvey mattes here, that lavender silver, the magenta, you got the turquoise here, and the black sparkly shade. That's basically my nails. Look at that. You see? You see, this is really pretty just to wear on its own. It's a matte base with the sparkles. So it might not have the same effect as a metallic shade, but I think great if you wanted a little bit of, you know, gleamy gleam on the matte, but didn't want it to be a metallic. Now I'm like starting to change my mind. I was gonna do the Natasha palette four, but these Collardos palettes look a lot of fun. We also have this Ether Beauty, whatever happened to them? Are, are they still in the in the mix of things? Ether, I said Ether, Ether. This is the Summer Solstice palette. I think inspired by gemstones. I, this is pretty nice to kind of take along. It's cardboard, lightweight. It has a lot of neutrals in here, but I think a uh, hardy enough colors to kind of spice it up. Like you got these eggplant hues over here. You got more of the copper, the red tones, the rose tones, even some cool tones here with the taupe shades. That's pretty. Wow, I forgot about this palette. Did I even use this at one point? I don't even know. Those are really pretty shades. And the mattes from what I remember are pretty soft. Yeah, so this we have like a tan brown, more like a pinky tan, and that's more like an orange, like a, a an orange terracotta. Ooh, maybe I should do this one. This is getting hard. <laughs> Smoke sessions from Melt. This was a lot of fun. More of like, I. I would consider this to be an extension of Gemini if they kind of ventured into the minty part of the green spectrum, which they did. So they did both the mint and the antique olive shades in one palette, and you have the accompanying matte shades that align with either the mint side or 
the more antique olive side. I thought this was really nice too. Mel is very heavy duty. I have to be in a certain mood to get ready for their palette. I would argue though that Gemini 2, their most recent palette, I think one of the more softer approaches. There was also Brunette, which kind of disappointed me because I felt they could have uh, substituted one of their like three beige shaders they included in that palette for a deeper matte brown because the one they have in there just it doesn't have enough intensity to kind of go deeper into the spectrum if you are uh, deeper complected than me. So in that sense, it was limiting, but I actually really liked the concept. You know what I mean? Just sometimes they just put too much of one color that has very little nuance, just not enough to include in a palette that you only have eight slots for, you know what I'm saying? Oh my gosh, the Tom Ford Winter Collection. Soleilage and Soleil Dove. <laughs> Shut up, Alicia. This was really pretty. I remember the compacts were white with the gold lining. The baked gelée Tom Ford eyeshadow formula is great. It has nice sheen, great luminosity, easy to blend. This was, I think, one of the more approachable quads in that, of course, you have that cool bronze with that core, like that salmon pink, rather, and then the more cool, taupey kind of champagne gold shades in there as opposed to Solenage, which is is that the one with the blue well i guess we'll find out i haven't even applied any cheek products yet because i'm still trying to decide what i'm going to apply on my face and at some point i have to get up again and grab my eyebrow pencil hmm. that's what i wanted to do i will create a video about my can't live without makeup products, yes. And I was thinking about it over the weekend because I find myself using the same products now for a number of months turned into years, and I don't think I'm gonna change them in quite some time, so. Or I use them no matter what new whatever comes along, I'm always returning to those products, so stay tuned for that video. Oh yes, the Solenage. We have the midnight blue with the black and this deeper taupe shade with the snow shade. That's lovely too. I have a video using all these quads, by the way, actually using the entire collection. So if you want to take a peek at that, it's not with this camera and not with this mic. So, you know, bear with the, the lesser quality in that video, but I, I did review this, this collection. Oh. The Pat McGrath Star Wars collab, one of the most craziest times on the internet. And might I share, well, let me show the lipstick first. This is one of the Astral lipsticks, but it's in all gold. And yes, I had to keep the box in gold Astral. Did I even use, no, I didn't even use this. This is untouched, untouched gonna stay that way. I also have two life-sized Grogu dolls. I'm that person. I'm that person. Uh, they're still in the box. I didn't want to open them in case they, I, I don't know if I'll sell them in the future, but I have a feeling the Mandalorian, when it returns, might be crazy popular, even more popular than when it just, when it arrived a few years back. They're so great. I got them from Sideshow. What was I thinking? The other Star Wars Pat collab oh, in the Star Trooper design. Look at this. Isn't this fantastic? I am so happy. I know this might be a little triggering for some because many had expressed their disappointment and anger when they could not get past checkout. So this is another Astral Bomb shade, nude Astral, like back in the box you go. Oh, Hourglass. I don't know where we are with Hourglass because when that whole debacle over, you know, the deeper shades that weren't the deepest, and now they have a new foundation, which I did see. It appears that people are really loving it. But again, I just had applied my Pat McGrath. I still have my NARS. I'm not sure if, I don't think it will be necessarily better than those foundations. It will just be different, right? And I don't have any more room for more great different foundations. I think I have to find something that's better than what I already have. 
And what I already own is top notch, high tier. I mean, the NARS, I think, is in the contention for being the best foundation of 2022. I'm not kidding. So maybe the Hourglass is now a contender. I'm not entirely sure. I know this palette specifically, the Ambient Lighting Edit Unlocked. Was this the one that was out of stock forever and took a very long time to get back into stock? I know the problem with Hourglass is that it's very limited in its powder range, right? Because they are so great with the concealers and the foundations, but when it comes to the powders, I mean, so limited in terms of the depth. And I understand they're coming from a different standpoint, like everything's baked and the marbleizing, whatever. So I, I don't really know. I, I keep this one because I think this is one of their best palette curations. And I know I'm not the deepest. I'm, I'm speaking for my skin tone. The finish of Hourglass blushes and their finishing powders is unlike anything in the market. With this texture, I mean, for people who don't like powder anything, but manage to create a formula that just has like a soft focus effect, that they literally try to formulate the light technology and different types of light into their powder. So I just think that is a unique uh, take on makeup, but I know if, if if you're not feeling hourglass, I get it. I get it supreme bronze artist couture I thought this was a fantastic palette. I also did a comparison with the Supreme nudes and then supreme mauves tanked. I really like that palette I know it has its challenges with the drier textures, but I made it work But I thought this was great because it had the the spicier tones if you will with the orange red here, the more golden bronze and the other shades, even the, the cooler row you see here. So very versatile with that delivery. Oh, what do we got here? We got a little Natasha Denona single. I think this might be the one that always got crushed. So fun fact about what I learned at the Natasha Denona store, there was a time where a formula change had to occur because some of these shadows, which she desperately wanted to bring to market, as great as and shiny as they were, just weren't practical in transit. Unfortunately, the delivery people did not understand that. So when they kind of threw down the boxes and did whatever, a lot of the shadows cracked because they're so soft. So this is true gold and it is very shiny. I don't remember if this is the newer formula or the older formula, but there had to be a change because you, she couldn't keep selling broken eyeshadow palettes and that's what kept on getting delivered. So that was quite the challenge. All right, Burberry. We got these two <laughs> Burberry face palettes. I definitely had FOMO when I decided to skip the Burberry eyeshadow palette with the plums and the reds. That was tough, fam. I'm just, I'm just gonna say it. that was tough. It was so beautiful and just right up my alley in terms of the, the shades that I absolutely adore. I understood that I had those shades in some capacity in my collection. But all that to say, this is the 02 medium dark, where you have the cream contoury shade here, and then the bronze blush and highlight bake shade. So this is the contouring cream powder that was a little drier in consistency, but uh, preferable to those who had normal to oily skin. So I think it was easier or not so much easier to blend, but just have better staying powder than something more emollient would. And we have Duo Glow from Natasha, uh, 01 Alba, which was like an all over blush highlight moment. So you can apply this, you know, on a wide area of your face to get like that. Oof. I labeled my Tom Ford compacts because I just wanted to look down and see what was what. So you have the Intensity Shape and Illuminate palette, one of the most coveted contouring highlight palettes used by makeup enthusiasts and professionals alike. A lot more emollient than what we just saw in the Burberry face palette. Honeymoon, Honeymoon was a fantastic palette all around. You just couldn't go wrong with those shades. Like the Bordeaux shade with the eggplant plum and the golden bronze. Body Heat was another one. 
closely related to Honeymoon, but I think this runs a little cooler. And I'm telling you, I haven't been using these, fam. This is why I need to stop. Golden Mink. Golden Mink had these interesting, I think this was a slightly different formula delivery than what we just saw. These are more traditional powder, right, with a little bit of sheen. So I could swatch that here. And then what you saw up top, I think were, it's almost like a Charlotte Tilbury moment with like the pop shade, right? Really nice uh, shine there that you can apply over the satin powder shades for more glitz. And then we have Intensity One, which was the lighter cream color. <sighs> I have so many things. Incandescent Seven. I think I bought this on sale. There was a time where there was a lot of Tom Ford on sale. Oh my goodness. So this shade for both the highlighter and the blush. I mean, look at that shine. It's incredible. And lastly, in this drawer. We have the Kaleido Star Surfer Highlight, Space Age Highlighter in Star Surfer. I just get a kick out of these vintage design. It reminds me of the Jetsons compacts. I think they're fantastic. I think they also reformulated this, so I'm not sure if this is the older version of Star Surfer, but I think this is the the pink flip. I forgot, is, does that have the pink flip? Yes, it does. It's a pink flip but you see it's very icy, very icy, yeah? So I'm so gonna keep that in the box, gonna put it back in the box. So we have a lot of face cheek options here. <sighs> what shall we do? You know, I'm really feeling, I'm feeling the Tom Ford. It's been a while that I applied the Tom Ford. I'll go in with intensity two. Let's grab a brush. I'll go in with the BK Beauty again, but hitting the edge of the brush and nudging that color into the hollows. So this has more an emollient finish, but you can see how it's just beautifully skin-like and finished and why it's a favorite among makeup professionals because it doesn't look like makeup, you know what I mean? It just looks like a natural sculpt to the skin and it's beyond easy to blend. It just kind of melts into your complexion and the color is just enough, right? So you can see here, despite the fact that I looked a little too light on the center of my face, once I introduce the intensity too, we're, we're back on track, okay? And this highlighter shade, which is the same in every compact, although the contour shade becomes deeper, the highlight shade remains the same and it's an ideal universal balm shade that anyone can use for that glass skin effect right on the cheekbones. And you could use as a first step for highlighter also if you wanted to go in with a separate powder, excuse me, highlighter if you liked. Now because we can, I will follow up with Natasha's Tan Bronze and Glow Palette. You don't have to do this, but you could reinforce what you just applied on your face, the Tom Ford, with a powder bronzer. Let me take my Surat cheek brush and just lightly go over where I applied the Tom Ford. And you don't need a lot, you know what I'm saying? This is, you know, if you wanted a little more coloring, a little more reinforcement, but I just adore this shade and I haven't applied it in quite some time, so I wanted to, you know, just take that extra step. And having one of these shades, so on top of the balm, we could go in with the gelé type formula from the palette, and that's going to, yeah, I'm gonna act as a reinforcement. It's gonna give a little more adherence and kind of bump up the glow. And Natasha's gelé formula it's just one of the best, I think, highlighter formulas out there. When delivering that highlight without the texture, it just melts into the skin and it's wonderful. Now we got blush. We got a lot of blush options. We could do the Tom Ford. We could do Linda. We could do Linda too. Let's do Linda's Infinity Glam, both uh, Andromeda and Pinwheel. So I'll combine those two shades and just apply over everything. The Tom Ford the Natasha Denona. So I'm gonna pop that all over the cheeks and bring it into everything else, right? Into the highlighter and the bronzer. 
and that's very pretty. I think these pink shades are fantastic and they're very lightweight. Yeah, they don't overwhelm the cheeks. Now what are we gonna do with the eyeshadow? Man, I kinda wanna do all the things, you know what I'm saying? I did Charlotte Tilbury last time, so I'm trying to stay away from that color story. Well, you know what? This is what I'm gonna do. If you have this palette and you're like, oh, you know what? I haven't been using it. You could use it as like an accent palette and I'm gonna show you, stay there. I actually got this idea from Linda where she applied an accent shade on the inner corner and on the outer brow, which I thought was really cool. But if you want a little more definition, yes, I grabbed my brow pencil. You could also have your favorite eye pencil on standby. This is my Pat McGrath Permagel Liner in Black Coffee. It goes with me everywhere. You might be seeing this in the Holy Grail product video. I mean, naturally. So looking at the Eye Ecstasy palette, I had the idea of using the gold standard shade as like our accent shade, right? Or you could use any other. Just like, I. okay, so I'm gonna do two, I'm gonna do different acts, okay? So the first one we'll do, we'll use gold standard as the inner corner moment. I'm looking for a mirror, don't mind me. Let me use Artist Couture, thank you so much. So we'll place gold standard here not only on the majority of the inner corner, but we want to round it out so that it kind of comes around deeper than your typical highlight placement. Because remember, this is like the accent because, brows, because remember, we're using this as an accent moment so you can cover more surface area with gold standard if you wanted. But what Linda did is that she took the second part here on like the outer edge of the brow. She used a pastel color, which I think was very clever. So maybe you could experiment with the pastels. The thing is high time we apply a brow because the brows are looking a little left out here. So let's quickly do these brows. So we have gold standard on the outer higher arch of the brow. The thing is very avant-garde, you know? I wanna keep it there. I like it there. And then we can take black coffee and do our wing. So you could apply mascara, or if you wanted a little more definition, we can place black coffee first on the majority of the lash line and start to shape it up. And this is what I like to do, a rough sketch first, and then I'll take a pencil brush or what have you. This is a, a lip pencil brush, but you can take a flatter shader, whatever you think is more comfortable to uh, use in order for you to accomplish this wing. So that's where we got. That, that could be the look. You got the gold standard on the inner corner as well as on the brow bone. If you need it, you could use your finger just to kind of whisk it out a little bit. I think that's fun to do. Or you can take another color from Eye Ecstasy and maybe you could place it as your dominant wing. So we already have black coffee. I picked up blue blood and now we can use blue blood as our wing. Yeah, so that's gonna be a beautiful plum color or you could do a gradient. So we have blue blood on like three quarters of the wing and then we can take Synthetica or you could do the reverse. I'm taking Synthetica with the same brush and now hitting the wing portion with the brighter purple. And what black coffee will do, and it could have been extreme black, right? So if you wanted to use the black to get more out of the shades, but I think black coffee works just fine, then you can do it that way. And I think this is easier because a little easier to actually shape your wing with a pencil. Once you have that outline, you could apply whatever shadow you want on top to have it a different color. And on the other side, oh my goodness, this is tough. Well. If you have this little this little guy, I think applying Crimson Fire all over the lid and then buffing out the edges is the way to go. And you see, it kind of reminds me of Blitz Fire, but not as intense. But it's so smooth that you don't need a mat to smooth out the edges, right? So whatever we have, look at me trying to blend with my left. This is how much confidence I have in patch shadows. I really should try to learn how to blend with my left because I can paint my nails with my left hand, 
but I do it very often, so I, I kind of required a knack for it. But I think it helpful, why not see what we can do with the left? But because, again, the formula is so forgiving, even with the rehearsal side, it's not bad. Look at that. It's like I did it with my right hand. You don't need to over manipulate the shadow. You could just whisk it out like this because it just takes little movement to create that nice blur and a soft brush to not, again, over, overly move. So technical. Placing Crimson Fire on the lower lash line. And one thing you can do if you're working with the opposite hand, instead of moving the hand, keep the brush in place and just move your eye. That's something you could also do with nail painting that you place the nail at the edge and roll the nail with the brush instead of actually having to move the brush. You're just kind of whisking out here. That's so, look at that. Look at us. You could do gold standard on the inner corner. Since I already have Artist Couture up, I'll go in with sand, which is like a champagne-y type of a highlight shade and dabbing that on the inner part of the eye. Yeah, I think that's very pretty. And taking Mirage, that cool bronze matte and just having that shade on the the arch of the brow to kind of soften that a bit and why not i'll place it here too around gold standard yeah because you know just to make it a little more matte not the gold standard part but the shinier parts on her right brow okay we're almost done you're like alicia can you wrap please i want to do i don't know how this is going to go i'll take lapis luxury and do one of these <laughs> I think it's so fun to do the uh, double crease thing. It's oddly satisfying to do the swoop. This right here, I don't know what it is, but rather fun. If you want to cut the bottom portion, so what we can do is grab a concealer, uh, preferably lighter than what you would put under your eye, or I say that because I haven't been going super light under my eyes as of late. Tap some on the back of your hand. Take a very thin, flat brush, and we can now try to clean up under Lapis Luxury. So it could appear just sharper. You could also take some off from the top if you wanted and refine the placement, right? So. Avoid smudging by cleaning your brush in between takes so you don't pick up too much of the lapis luxury color. So I definitely messed up here. I took too much color away from the wing portion, but it's all good because you can always go back and add more shadow. But I primarily wanted to clean up this portion here because I thought it dropped a little too low onto my lid and also wanted to make this point a little sharper. So it's not the best job, but I just think it's fun with T Pat's metallic shades, right? To do this with. And the brush I use is a, a Koyuro Yoshiki brush. It is a lip and pencil brush, but it's so smooth. And compared to refer number three, it's thinner. So you might find it easier to use this brush. I love the number three for the detail work, but I know and understand that something thinner will just have more fluidity to it, which will make it easier to draw these lines on the lid. All right, supply some lashes and I'll be right back. Friends, we have arrived at the finished look. Here are some close-ups, not only of the entire makeup look, but of how the skin looks and reminding me again, a point I made in my last video about having products that just hold it down, that are foolproof, that no matter how you apply them, how much you layer them, they will create still a skin-like finish that looks natural. And yes, you can dial it up or down depending on the intensity, how much sculpt you want, how much color you want on the face. But these are just outrageously good. And anything else that comes there after I think will just be more outrageously good colors sure but not necessarily better right I think this is a really good presentation of what I already have in my collection and foolproof yes and I can understand how creams can be tricky that if it's too old if it starts to smell things get a little weird 
that compact, just toss it, right? And buy something new if you think you need to replace that particular makeup item. But I just love what we did today. We did something more playful, something more low key, but I just, the highlighter situation right now is so good. I have the Ardell Natural Lash in 433 and the Dior Rouge, the uh, actual name, Rouge Dior. 449 Desante with uh, my, ho another Holy Grail product. Pat's lip liner in structure. Yes, it's, it's all here. So I think next video will be Holy Grail products. I will take my notes, go through a lot of the makeup items that I have been not necessarily heavily be using recently, but know that if, if something happens to the majority of my makeup collection and I'm left with these, I'll be good. I'll be sad, but I'll know my makeup looks will be held down because listen, we can't be picky, okay? I'm so excited to share what these will be because this will uh, force me to think really hard about it. And I might have to do a brush edition. I mean, <laughs> We have to, okay? After the Holy Grail makeup video, we gotta do the Holy Grail brush video. Ooh, that's gonna be hard. That's gonna require some heavy <laughs> philosophical looking within one's soul to decide what my favorites will be. But anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it inspired you to look into your collection at what you haven't used in a while and maybe will rekindle your love for some lost faves. I will see you down in the comments, fam. And until then, that is. Right. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial. Get ready with me looking into the makeup archives extravaganza or monthly videos. Take care and I will see you again soon.